Association of Ipe Wapas. Um, so, welcome back uh, for our show. Uh, we are live after the first day of proceedings at the MSP of the Treaty on the Prohibition of Nuclear Weapons, which is still ongoing uh, right next to the store. Uh, and so far, what we've, uh, and we are joined uh, today by Maria uh, Eugenia Villarreal from uh, Mexico and based in uh, Guatemala. Uh, she is also on. She's from she's from CELAC and also on the steering group of ICANN. Thank you for being with us. Thank you very much for this opportunity. And uh, yeah, as I mentioned, the proceedings are still ongoing. What we are hearing right now is uh, the uh, general debate. So where basically all states that uh, are joining this conference have the opportunity to f first set out their views on uh, the treaty and on this historic day of the first meeting of state parties. Uh, that, of course, takes uh, quite a while because for every state, this is quite a historic milestone. And so they really want to take the opportunity to express their, um, their mutual congratulations and their, uh, satisfaction about the entry into force of uh, this treaty. And so we've had a lot of states uh, represented also at a very high political level. For example, the prime minister of uh, the Republic of Fiji was here and mentioned that uh, for as long as uh, nuclear weapons use apocalypse as a bargaining chip, we would never have peace. There were statements from a number of foreign ministers, from the Under Secretary General of the United Nations uh, for Disarmament Affairs, from Antonio Guterres, the Secretary General of the United Nations, the President of the International Committee of the Red Cross, uh, Mr. Maura. So uh, quite a lot of um, very interesting uh, and topical speeches that we heard. Uh, and this is going to go on until tomorrow morning when the conference will then move on to uh, more specific debates about um, a substance that needs to be addressed at this MSP um, uh, conference. Uh, so quite a significant moment, everyone uh, taking the opportunity mm -hmm. to talk about it. Uh, what, um, uh, what can you, uh, how did you um, live this first day of the MSP? Well, I feel I feel very happy to be here. Finally, we have uh, this uh, meeting uh, after some years ago that we were expecting with a lot of expectations, this, this first meeting. This is a great moment because we arrived to this conference with 65 ratifications with a region that declares itself uh, that they ra have ratified the treaty that uh, that we ha that we have two years ago three uh, three ratifications more Guatemala ratified one week ago so I, we we feel strong we f we feel self confident that the, that the, the treaty is working we have many expectations that um, all the countries join the treaty. That's why we are here with them, talking about the consequences of the, of the nuclear weapons, seeing how they can join the treaty, and ratify the, the, the treaty, and in some way to get together to stigmatize the, these nuclear weapons. And uh, congratulations then on last week's uh, ratification by Guatemala, the country you are based in. So I'm sure you uh, played a role there campaigning uh, on the ground. Yes, I am, I, am, well, I am based in Guatemala, but I am in charge of the Central American region and also in charge uh, of the Dominican Republic. Now, uh, well, we have been very focused working uh, for, the for the ratification of seven countries and we got it. We got it last week with the ratification of Guatemala. So we feel very proud because it's not only one country that, that we have the ratification, it's the whole region, it's the first region in the world that uh, has ratified the treaty. So all the countries of Central America have now ratified this treaty. Uh, and that brings us to uh, the clip that we recorded earlier uh, today where we caught up 
with uh, the universalization offices of ICANN, uh, who celebrated three more ratifications. Let's have a look. Tonight we had uh, very exciting news reaching us from New York. As we mentioned earlier, three new ratifications have come in, have been deposited with uh, the United Nations. So we're joined by, the, by ICANN's universalization team uh, in order to celebrate this moment. And the lucky countries are... Capo Verde, Grenada, and Timor-Leste. So that's excellent timing indeed on the first day of the MSP. It is. Um, these countries were announced as the new ratifications in the opening ceremony. Many countries have congratulated them. It's a, it's a great way to kick things off. And actually we have quite a number of countries working really hard to uh, finalize their national procedure and we expect more ratification in the near future. And they'll have another great opportunity moving towards the UN General Assembly later this year. Excellent. Thanks a lot for your work and back to the live. And we're back with Maria Eugenia. So uh, let's follow up this good news with the question, why is it so important that these countries have joined the treaty? Well, we, we are making all the efforts that the majority of countries in the world join the treaty. So now we feel proud that most of the countries in Latin America and some countries in the Caribbean, that this is the case of Granada, has ratified the treaty. Every country counts in this treaty. It doesn't matter if they have nuclear weapons or don't have nuclear weapons. There are, uh, we need that each country in the world join the treaty and promote the ratification, the universalization of the treaty, Article 12. So I think that, well, all the, all the campaigners uh, in, uh, in the framework of ICANN, we are trying to do our best to get this goal. Now we have 65, but we are expecting more in the next years. And indeed, the cross-border effects of nuclear weapons uh, are a responsibility of every country to address. So we can't just leave it to the nuclear arms state, can we? Exactly. I think that uh, we need the support of every country in the world. And as I, as I, uh, I have said, that also is, is important the signature. It's important the ratification. What is important, the stigmatization of the weapon. Muchísimas gracias. Thank you that you were with us today. And um, as our next guest, uh, thank you, you can... Uh, uh -huh. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you so much. Uh, as we're joined now by Uzo from uh, Nigeria. Um, I can't pronounce your name, but it's on the screen. So uh, maybe you can uh, say your name yourself. Um, my name is Uzo Chukohanya, Uzo for short. I am, I'm a lawyer from Nigeria. Excellent. Thank you for being with us uh, today. Uh, you are part of the youth delegation to the TPNW. Uh, tell us more about that. Um, yes, that's correct. Um, so I'm here with um, Youth for TPNW, and we are young people, you know, organizing together, trying to advocate against the or for the non-proliferation of nuclear weapons. We found out that um, in many of these organized gatherings, youth representation was always lacking. Mm -hmm. And as a result, there was a need for you to gather together and put ourselves in order, you know, to advocate for these things. And uh, what role can uh, youth play, or uh, maybe ask the other way around, what's the significance of this treaty of uh, these topics for youth? Um, it's very significant because, quite frankly, we have a longer time to spend on this earth than older people because um, much of the people, for instance, the Hibakusha, mm -hmm. most, most of them are you know, really old and they don't have much time left on earth. So they're going to have to pass the mantle down to the next generation and the next generation. So instead of having it change each generation, it's much better if young people take the mantle up and, you know, advocate over decades. And do you uh, see a connection with other issues that are important for you, such as climate change? Yes, yes, I do. Um, so I work for Yongo, that's the official youth constituents for the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change. Mm -hmm. And there's definitely a nexus between nuclear weapons and climate change in the sense that those two issues pose the single greatest threat to human existence. And it would be instructive for us to, you know, connect it, mm -hmm. find an intersectionality between those two issues and advocate 
alongside each other because if you eradicate nuclear weapons but you don't solve climate change we're still doomed if you do nuclear and um, climate change and you don't address nuclear weapons there's also the potential of us being doomed so they have to be addressed together indeed two topics that have to be addressed with urgency so we'll continue that uh, tomorrow at the uh, uh, next day of uh, the msp where the proceedings will surely be ongoing and we'll discuss that in more detail at 9 30 a.m tomorrow uh, we hope to see you there again thanks so much for having been with us thank you so much it's a pleasure and